Hi, this is Robin Bremer, and you're watching Walks with God. And today I'm going to continue on our series. Uh, this is number two on uh, bringing revival to America or bringing revival to whatever country you are. And I'm going to be, um, God asked me to teach from my book right here, Feed My People Joy. And I'm actually going to be teaching from chapter 18, the last chapter in the book. And uh, basically I'm going to talk to you today about what, uh, about what to expect in a revival. Um, first of all, in, um, uh, let's see, Isaiah 60, it talks about gross darkness will cover the earth. I mean, darkness will cover the earth and, and deep darkness the people. But we're to arise and shine because the glory of the Lord is going to be seen on us. A lot of people today are taking, a lot of Christians today are taking the attitude of all this bad stuff is happening. They want to go hide in the cave and stack up on food. Or maybe not to that extreme, but they're thinking, um, Things are going to get really bad and ugly, and they are. But that's when we're supposed to step up and uh, walk in power, authority, and dominion and change situations for the people around us. Um, we're not supposed to be af afraid of it. We're supposed to take a po power and authority over it. But a lot of Christians won't do that because they are so much in fear about the end times that all they're seeing is the collapse of this and the collapse of this and the breakdown of this and they're not seeing that this is the time when we shine when the glory is seen on us so okay let's look at um, uh, Matthew 24 14 it says and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations then the end would come okay a lot of people think that the right the end is going to come um what's going to happen is uh, it's going to get so bad god's going to rapture us out of here and he is but we're going to go through a little bit of the the beginnings of sorrow earthquakes famines pestilence and a few things like that uh, which is already happening around the world um, but as those things happen we're going to be the light in the darkness to non-christians to be a witness that jesus is alive Okay, we are told to be witnesses. A witness is somebody who can give evidence, a testimony, or proof of what they're talking about. And we are to witness that Jesus has been resurrected. That means that we are to witness, not that Jesus was a good man or that Jesus was the Son of God, but we are to be a witness to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the way Jesus was a witness that he was alive was he did signs, wonders, and miracles. And that's exactly what we're supposed to do. The Bible says that we're supposed to imitate God as dear children. And we're to do the same thing he did because the same, the Holy Spirit as Jesus' representative lives inside of us. Okay, so let's break down that scripture. Um, okay, the gospel and this gospel. Okay, first of all it says this gospel shall be preached as a witness, then the end will come. It doesn't say some terrible event will happen, nuclear war, the world will be destroyed, then and O'Connell says, no, this witness, uh, I mean, um, um, this gospel will happen the, of the kingdom, then the end will come. So that's what we need to do, is we need to get preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Now let me break that down a little bit, real quick. Gospel means good news. News that already happened, news is always something that's already done. So it's good news. The gospel is good news, not uh, woe is me, I'm sick, poor, and trod over. Okay? The gospel, the good news of the kingdom. Okay, the kingdom is God's authority, God's dominion, and God's rule. And that is in you. And that will go over in another chapter. Okay, so the good news of the kingdom, God's dominion, God's rule, God's authority in you is going to be preached around the world as a witness, as proof that Jesus has been resurrected and then the end will come. Okay, and the gospel of the kingdom, according to Romans 14, 17, is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's why the Holy Spirit is such a key player in this end time revival. That's why it's so important to praise and worship and get into God's presence so that you are filled to overflowing with the Holy Spirit. Um, righteousness, you need to understand who you are, that you are in right standing with God. That's another chapter we'll go over. Uh, at peace and joy chapters. Okay, so let's see. The kingdom witness, we got that. Um, and, um, okay, 
the glory of uh, going back to Isaiah 60, it sort of tells what's going to happen. Gross, uh, deep darkness will cover the earth, the people, and darkness the earth, and that's where we're headed and what's happening now with the fall of the earth's kingdom, which is the economy and and all the things that Satan is ruler over in this earth. The Christians who know their righteousness in Christ Jesus and their authority are beginning to step up and take over and beginning to do signs and wonders. You'll see that in a lot of other countries, and it's coming to America. Um, and another thing I want you to notice that we're supposed to be the glorious bride. We're supposed to go to, from victory to victory. So I don't want you to be afraid of the end times. I want you to get excited. I want you to just listen to these tapes, uh, begin to understand and walk in power and authority and be that victorious bride. So that's just a touch on chapter 18, um, the last chapter of the book, which might have been, the, should have been the first chapter. There's probably about 10 pages on that. It's really good. It also has in the book here, some spirits that you can pull down and bind to bring about, uh, to, to get rid of religious spirits because Christianity is not religion and that's a strong hold of spirits in this end time. To get rid of uh, certain spirits and to release uh, ministering spirits, favor, uh, grace, revival, and so on, spirits to, to release. Um, and that's chapter 18. So that's it for today.